This fall, the big screens will be graced with the last chapter of Tom Hardy's trilogy, which first began in 2018. Picking up where the story was left off in Let There Be Carnage, Eddie Brock and his symbiote buddy Venom are two fugitives on the run. The new trailer for the third movie, Venom The Last Dance, teases what these two will get up to after their odd couple vacation. Audiences were mind blown by the post credit scene of the second film. Effects of the spell cast by Doctor Strange caused Venom to jump realities from the Sonyverse straight into the MCU. But that was two years ago. Now, Detective Mulligan is the host of a new symbiote, which will be introduced in the films. In this marvelous video, we're going to talk about this symbiote named Toxin. How does he compare to Carnage and Venom? Do they share any weaknesses? Let's find out. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. As long as Venom lives, everyone, everything will end. Venom 3 teases exciting new villain in Symbiote. In Venom's universe, the symbiotes were inorganic extraterrestrials created from something we know as the Living Abyss. Their creator was the Eldritch God, Null, who made the symbiotes at the beginning of the universe. Venom claimed that his species is a benevolent one, but the trait of each symbiote changed depending on the host. For instance, when the spawn of Venom bonded with sociopathic serial killer Cletus Cassidy, we got Carnage. Carnage was brutally murderous and bloodthirsty, an attribute absorbed from his host. In the second film, Venom Let There Be Carnage, Eddie Brock and Venom managed to defeat the psycho killer Cassidy in a symbiote, Carnage. The two saved the day and were on the run as fugitives. However, the post credit scene for this film is referenced in the latest trailer for The Last Dance. As Eddie lay in a hotel room watching TV, Venom asked if he wished to glimpse into their symbiote world. Venom began explaining the otherworldly history of his race, a tiny bit of knowledge that would have made Eddie's tiny little brain explode. Just then, the lights in the room started to flicker and everything began to glow. Minutes later, the entire room had changed and it wasn't Venom's doing. The TV screen showed J. Jonah Jameson reporting on Peter Parker being the real Spider-Man. Tom Holland Spider-Man. Venom seemed eager to meet the masked vigilante. In the post credit scene of Spider-Man No Way Home, a piece of the Venom symbiote gets left behind in this universe. Does this mean that Spider-Man and Venom will face each other sooner than we think? The trailer of The Last Dance says otherwise as this chunk of the symbiote is captured by Chiwetel Ejiofor's character, who works for a mysterious government organization. It is believed that he's returning for the role of Baron Mordo. The trailer also teases a potential symbiote invasion now that Venom knows that the inhabitants of his homeworld are aware of his presence on Earth. It also depicts a super shady government facility that housed multiple symbiotes in containment units. Juno Temple is playing the character named Dr. Payne in this movie. But we beg the question, will the movie also give us a glimpse of her Scream symbiote? A good chunk of the third movie might show Eddie and Venom fleeing from the military through the desert. But as we saw in the trailer, there is a major sequence set in Sin City. Here, Eddie and Venom waltz with Mrs. Chen. Confusingly, Reese Iffens also makes an appearance. He had previously played Dr. Curtis Connor, aka the Lizard and The Amazing Spider-Man. We are yet to know what his role is in this movie. Venom will confront a symbiote killing monster, which could be the film's version of Grendel, a monster sent by Null. Or it could be one of the Xenophage, an alien species who love Clinter host brains. The most exciting of all is the setting up of Patrick Mulligan's symbiote. The mysterious science facility is shown to have captured Mulligan, who was already bonded with a symbiote. Toxin. Toxin is the deadly offspring of Venom incarnate. Even with Mulligan fighting against the Bond, Toxin will end up being one of the critical antagonists, if not the anti-hero in the movie. We wonder how it will end, with the film's tagline hardly reassuring us, till death do they part. But who's gonna die for good? Who is Venom the Last Dance's Toxin? In the 2004 comic series Venom vs. Carnage Volume 1, Issue Number 1, Toxin was conceived. His story began with Venom and Carnage locked in a fierce battle. 
Carnage seemed to be in denial about an upcoming event. Carnage was the 999th symbiote in his lineage, and the thousandth one was about to be born. But Carnage planned to do everything in his power to stop this from happening. He chucked Venom into the Hudson River and began burying himself deep underground in an attempt to bury his unborn offspring within him. Meanwhile, Felicia Hardy was attending an art exhibit. The power going out was followed by a booming explosion. Officer Patrick Mulligan arrived on the scene with his partner. Mulligan was considered to be one of the finest police officers in New York City. He excelled on his work, and as a family man, with a beautiful wife who had a baby on the way. In the middle of the crater caused by the explosion, lay Cletus Cassidy, with carnage barely bonded onto him. Birthing was said to be a painful process for the symbiote, one that left them wasted nearly all their energy. Carnage was too weak from giving birth to kill his offspring right away. Instead, he loomed over Mulligan, referring to him as their host for the evening. The psychotic symbiote doesn't kill the officer right away, but unbeknownst to him, Mulligan was left with a black speck at the back of his neck. Venom managed to swim out of the river, instantly feeling the presence of another one of them on the planet. His duty was to protect the 1000th symbiote in their lineage. Back at the Mulligan house, Venom showed up unannounced, but it was simply to protect the family from his murderous son. While Spider-Man and Venom are distracted from fighting each other, Carnage seeks to get rid of Mulligan's wife, Gina. He threw her down the stairwell before swinging away with Patrick in his grip, but our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man was nearby. He caught Gina in his woven webs in the nick of time. In issue number two, Carnage felt even more threatened by the birth of his own offspring. Both Venom and Carnage knew that Toxin would be a godly, powerful symbiote possessing their combined powers. After the symbiote offspring bonded loosely with Mulligan, Carnage was resolved to kill them both since they weren't strong enough yet to do a full super-powered symbiote skin. The issue began with Carnage chucking Patrick from a rooftop. Black Cat, Felicia Hardy swooped in to save him. Although reluctant to get involved in this messy family drama of the symbiotes, Felicia barely held her own until Venom showed up. His loathing for his own offspring burned him. By this point, Venom had sworn to look over Mulligan's baby boy, birthed by his wife. He was determined to let Patrick live at the cost of Carnage's life. He was gotten rid for the moment, but that wasn't the last of Carnage. Patrick Mulligan tried to go back to his job as a police officer, but soon was plagued by whispering voices. Was he simply a sleep-deprived new dad, or was there something much more sinister and unnatural going on within him? Terrifying story arcs of Toxin in comics. After his transformation into Toxin, Mulligan only wished to fight against the base urges of a symbiote and use his powers to help others instead of killing them. However, Mulligan had walked out on his family after bonding with a symbiote. After the event of Spider-Man joining up with the Avengers, Marvel released a six-part series on Toxin's story. He battled against many dangerous villains who escaped from the high-security prison known as the Raft. He fought the likes of King Cobra, Wrecker, Pile Diver, The Answer, and Razor Fist. All the while, Mulligan kept in control as he taught the young symbiote what it meant to be a superhero of sorts. Then the sadistic Razor Fist sought to start a cult of depressed teenagers to enslave them. At first, Toxin refuses to come forward and fight the villain, but he and Patrick managed to strike a deal. Toxin was allowed two hours of playtime, but this didn't involve mindless killings. Even after this debacle, the villain with razors for fists began training an army of children and named them his Piranitons, who had to kill their parents. Toxin dealt with him once and for all by removing the razors from his fist. All this while, Toxin behaved precisely how you would expect a child symbiote to. He threw tantrums, couldn't stand being called a monster, broke Mulligan's laptop, and proceeded to steal a stack of them for his host. But thanks to Mulligan's training, Toxin was becoming more of an anti-hero than a monstrous creature. He showed actual restraint even when Razor Fist killed Mulligan's father. Toxin didn't kill him, but handed him over to the authorities instead. Patrick Mulligan attempted to fix things with his wife, Gina. He came clean to her about the whole symbiote affair and even introduced Toxin to his wife. Later, Mulligan was beaten to death by Blackheart, but the demon's plan of bringing the symbiote to hell had failed. The supervillain crime master then forced Toxin to bond with Eddie Brock, 
who was hell-bent on killing Venom. This symbiote looked slightly different and was overpowered by his host's wishes. After nearly dying in a grenade explosion, Eddie took his time to gain more control over the Toxin symbiote. During the Extreme Carnage storyline, Toxin bonded with a teenager named Bren Waters. Their primordial god, Null, had rejected Toxin from the invasion, so the two resorted to playing superheroes instead. Bren was by far the kindest host Toxin had bonded with. The symbiote realized that the bloodthirsty urges he was meant to carry down from his lineage just didn't come to him naturally. This was thanks to Mulligan's conditioning during his early years. Carnage attacked his offspring in Toxin's personal void, but the somewhat heroic symbiote managed to fight him off. Through the hive mind connection, Toxin felt the presence of a newly created symbiote named Silence, who had just bonded with Andy Benton. So Flash's Venom, Andy Silence, and Brent's Toxin teamed up against Carnage and other hostile symbiotes being housed at Life Foundation. The older symbiotes felt hesitant to pair up with Bren, but eventually they stick together. They believe that, in the absence of his previous mentor, the younger symbiote needed someone to keep an eye on him to ensure that his inherited darkness doesn't get the best of him. How does Toxin's personality compare to Carnage's? As a symbiote, Toxin was newly spawned in his new host. In the beginning, he was very naive and curious about the world before the vicious urges of a mature symbiote took over. Naturally, Mulligan feared that Toxin would turn out as murderous as Carnage was. But this relates to what we said earlier. The personality of the symbiote is often drawn from its bonded host. Still, Toxin's humor was morbid, and he tried his luck in making Mulligan more violent. The officer realized he could mentor the young symbiote and use their powers for good. Toxin cared for Patrick to a certain extent. When his host tried to kill himself, the symbiote cared enough to save Mulligan and even lecture him. Patrick claimed that this was only because Toxin didn't want to put himself through the trouble of bonding with another host, but his mentorship influenced Toxin. This stayed even after Mulligan's death at the hands of Mephisto's son, Blackheart. He was then captured by the crime master and forced to bond with multiple clones of Laura Kinney, which left Toxin traumatized and resentful. When he finally bonded with Eddie Brock, Toxin's anger towards his father fueled him and he let his bloodthirst and violent impulsions get the best of him. Toxin was on his way to becoming as ferocious as Carnage was, which destroyed Mulligan's efforts to try to turn him into a force of good. When he was a member of the Savage Six, Toxin, or Brock, relentlessly hunted Agent Venom and even went as far as to jeopardize innocent lives. In a near brush with death, Toxin had a moment of clarity, but Eddie Brock was still determined to kill Flash Bump since Venom. Toxin then completely submitted to Eddie's will, allowing his maddened host to do as he pleased. Finally, Toxin found a safe space in Bren Waters, a teenage boy he bonded with after nearly dying. Bren requested Toxin to make him look like a grown-up, so the symbiote gave Bren the appearance of Mulligan and Eddie combined. Toxin and Bren developed a fast friendship, deeply caring for one another. The teenager even claimed that not all his friends were bonded to him at the cellular level. They went on outings, even after Null's invasion of Earth. Bren Waters reminded Toxin of the kindness he was treated with by his first host, Mulligan. Human symbiote bonds were complicated. Toxin wished to be different and less homicidal. What powers and abilities does Toxin possess? Toxin possesses the same powers as his father Carnage and grandfather Venom. In appearance, when he was bonded to Mulligan, Toxin looked like a Spider-Man on drugs, with the same red and blue coloring and a slender frame. But when Toxin got progressively angry, he would grow larger and stronger. He would even grow fangs and claws in this state. While being bonded to Eddie Brock, the symbiote was massive in size and an aggressive red in color. His bonding with Bren Waters looks like the perfect combination of both Mulligan and Brock. As an otherworldly symbiote, Toxin possesses superhuman strength, speed, stamina, agility, reflexes, and durability. He is more resistant to injury compared to any of his predecessors and counterparts. While bonded with Eddie Brock, Toxin could easily withstand high-caliber bullets, blunt impact forces, and powerful energy blasts, to name a few. In every fight with this raging maniac of a father, Carnage, Toxin was able to walk away on skate. Funnily enough, this was the exact fear of Carnage which came to life. Given their symbiotic hive mind, Toxin also has a genetic memory 
which provides him with limited psychic ability and offspring detection. Similar to a spidey sense, Toxin possesses a symbiote sense, which gives him extra sensory abilities, making him hyper aware of his surroundings. On top of this, he's also immune to Spider-Man's spider sense and can bypass it with ease. Now, he possesses the coolest ability due to his nature of being a symbiote and constituent matter generation. He utilizes the same gooey substance that he's made up of as black constituent matter. This is endless uses. Toxin is often seen using tentacles and even turning this matter into spikes, blades, axes, and shields, amongst other things. The list of powers as one of the most powerful symbiotes would never end. Toxin can also regenerate and heal his injured host at accelerated speeds. He possesses the powers of camouflage and wall crawling. He can even produce webs and poisonous banks. Lastly, all he needs is a whip of any creature or human to track them down like a bloodhound. Does he share the same weaknesses as Venom and Carnage? So, fans of Venom know his weaknesses are sonic and heat, anti-Venom and being corrupted psychologically. All symbiotes are believed to be highly vulnerable to sonic and thermal attacks. He's also significantly weakened by negative human emotions of rage and hatred that fuel his bloodlust. The two extremes of a symbiote are either a killing machine or an anti-hero. There's no in-between. Of course, the anti-venom is his greatest weakness. Touching it proves to be excruciating, and prolonged contact would surely kill him. When the OG anti-venom agent died, Eddie Brock used it to cure the spider virus. Now, let's compare this to Carnage, who's just built different. Carnage has got no problem with heat as long as he's the one producing it. After soaking up the powers of the Darkhold, Carnage became immune to sonic attacks but vulnerable to chthonic magic, so much so that Carnage could easily survive being bombarded with ionized plasma from a star. While he's okay against sonic attacks and heat attacks, Carnage still recoils from anti-venom. After messing with a Grendel symbiote dragon, Carnage also gained a weakness with electricity. Being a kid and grandkid of both these symbiotes, Toxin is bound to share their weaknesses. Mulligan Symbiote is also vulnerable to fire, high-pitched sounds, and symbiote inhibitor drugs. But the combined traits of his lineage might make him a little more resistant than the previous symbiotes. If his powers and abilities have been enhanced due to genetic structure, we're sure that some of Carnage's impressive resilience was also inherited by his offspring. The only difference is that Toxin, when bonded with the right host, uses these abilities and even weaknesses to their full potential for some greater good outside of himself. Jesus Christ! Marvel's Verdict That is all you need to know about the Last Dance trailer and the exciting debut of Toxin in the films. Officer Mulligan really held the power to make or break the character of Toxin. If he were a man with a sadistic streak buried in him, Toxin would be no different than his father Carnage and enhance this cruelty. We all know why Toxin is such a favorite among the fans of the comics. His opinionated personality and deadpan sense of humor gives him a whole personality outside of his host. We're curious to see how Stephen Graham will play the role of the most talked about anti-hero. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us. If you haven't already, have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.